Today's Wednesday, May 27th. I hope you all have enjoyed the French Open up to this point. I want to comment on a couple matches that have happened so far. In particular, Serena Williams' match yesterday, and Nadal's match today, and Andy Murray's match today. So why don't we start with Serena Williams. Yesterday she played Clara Zakopalova. That's kind of difficult to get out, but she went to three sets and pulled it out on her ninth match point. And I didn't think Serena played particularly well, and neither did Serena. She said she played, quote, horrendous tennis. And the numbers, they didn't look awful. She served 55% for her first serve. That's not great. I think she made about 35 unforced errors. But the main thing that stood out to me was Serena's movement around the tennis court. A bunch of times when she was setting up for ground strokes, she seemed off balance. And Patrick McEnroe said something that I found interesting and I think helps explain why Serena's movement was a little off. He says that Serena's typically a stop and start mover. She gets to the ball, she plants, she sets up, she hits, and she recovers. And when you move like that, it works well on a hard court, but transitioning from that style of movement to clay courts where you're sliding into the ball, that can be difficult, especially since Serena, I think it only played four clay court matches leading into this tournament. So the Williams are typically, they play themselves into grand slams. They start a little slow, and then in the second week, they're playing better. So I suspect that once Serena gets her movement locked down, she'll be in much better shape. I do want to say that I think uh, Zakopalova played a pretty decent match. She played about as well as she could have. She served 74% for the entire match, uh, which is three out of four first serves, and she only won about 40, uh, it says here, 54% of her first service points, which is not great, but Serena always attacks the second serve. She's real aggressive, and she's very effective attacking second serves, and when Zakoplova hit a second serve, she only won 39% of those points. So even though her percentage wasn't great on first serves, it was pretty terrible on second serves, so she did a good job of kind of masking that weakness. The second match was between Andy Murray and Petito Starasi. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And Andy Murray pulled it out in four sets. He was down 5-1 in the third set and ended up reeling off six straight games. Now, Andy played a relatively clean match on paper. His serve was over 60%. He was plus 17, winners to unforced errors. But for some reason, I'm just sort of not feeling Andy at the French Open. I think he's probably going to go out in the fourth round or maybe the quarters. He's got Step, he's got uh, Gonzalez, Stepanek, and Gilles Simon in his quarter. And I think one of those guys will probably take him out. And certainly if he makes it to the semis, he's going to lose to Nadal. So I think Andy's a little bit behind in terms of his development on clay than he is on other surfaces, grass and hard, of course. So maybe next year, I, I, I think he, he's, uh, he's going he's gonna to bow out relatively shortly. The final match I want to talk about is between Rafael Nadal and Timuraz Gabashvili. Now, Nadal basically put the hurt on Gabashvili, but I think the match was real indicative of what makes Nadal so tough on clay. People always say, Nadal does a fantastic job of transitioning from defense to offense. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, when Nadal plays D, he's 10 to 15 feet behind the baseline. But when he switches to offense, you'll see him hugging the baseline much more. He's, he's basically on the baseline for a lot of his points. And when he's in that position, he's really able to pull you off the court. He's hitting those angle forehands, angle backhands, and that heavy topspin is really hooking the ball off the court. And a couple times against Gabishvili, he would be real far behind the baseline and then progressively work his way up. And then once he got to the baseline or somewhere in that general vicinity, the point was essentially over. He had Gabishvili on a rope, just moving him back and forth side to side. It'll be interesting to see how Nadal's movement holds up over the course of the tournament because he said he had a knee issue in a previous press, press conference. I didn't see any indication that his knee was bugging him. Hopefully it doesn't. You never want him at less than 100%, especially in a major. But the 
an, a rather an effective strategy against Nadal is to keep him far enough behind the baseline where he can't create those angles and run you around and take control of the point. And that's something Djokovic in particular has been pretty good about doing the last uh, couple times they have played. He's got Nadal running around, and when Nadal plays D, like I said, he's further behind the baseline. It's harder for him to pull you off the court. So I hope you all enjoy this analysis video and the previous one I did about Federer and Nadal's match in the finals of the Madrid Open. I'll keep them coming, but please post some comments, some feedback, and let me know what you would like to hear and maybe some graphical stuff you want us to throw in. We've got some stuff in the pipeline, but it's going to take us a few weeks to get that done, but we're real excited about it. It should work pretty well. So look forward to hearing from you, and we'll talk soon.